Welcome. Welcome to Crazy Blessed Worship. I'm Coley D. And I am the original Rick W. Ross. And we are stoked <laughs> to have Chris Sarver on today. I'm going to tell you in a minute how we got to meet him, but I want to say thank you, Chris, for coming on today. How are you doing? I'm doing great. How are you doing? <laughs> I think we are awesome today. <laughs> yes, we are. Man, Chris is somebody that I met through Facebook. And I didn't know anything about him. I just want to kind of throw this out there because some of you know that I lost access to my original Facebook account. If you don't and you're not wondering or if you're wondering why you haven't heard from me, if it's a black and white picture on the Kalidi account, go find the colored one. That's me now. <laughs> but when I lost access to my original account, I was like, well, I had a lot of people on there and I know I could have freaked out about rebuilding it or I could have a different approach. And I thought, I'm like, well, maybe instead of waiting for all these people to come to me, maybe I need to connect with these people that are meant to be in my network and connect with what the Lord has put on my heart to share with them. So, you know, it gives you like the, the friend, uh, what is the word I'm looking for? Like the friend suggestions and I'd sit there and like, I literally was praying that the Holy Spirit would lead me who I should be connected with. So like, if I wasn't supposed to send a friend request, just don't let that end up happening. And I actually had many people. I'm like, nope, I'm not going to click on it. It's a weird feeling, right? but it was just like, I really felt drawn to actually send requests to certain people. I did not send messages with many of them because I know of people get a friend request and they haven't accepted it, they might not see your message even. So I was trying to send something like if they approve my friend request, like thanks for the ad and a little something. And there are so many that came at once. I don't think I even got to message everybody. And it's so interesting to me because like Chris was one of these people that I had sent a request to. And uh, I know on uh, one of our crazy blessed worship posts, that somebody had commented on, Chris had gone in there saying something, I'm so glad that you found your way over here too, which was a real blessing to get to read that because um, that just tells me that somebody is really, you know, gleaning something from the group that they find helpful. And uh, I know, I, I think I've talked to, you know, you back and forth a few times, Chris, on Facebook now, but um, he was on Crazy Blessed Worship Live not too long ago. And uh, if you don't know what that is, it's a online Friday night concert with Christian music from 6 till 8 p.m. Central Standard Time. It's inside the Crazy Blessed Worship Facebook group. And uh, man, it was just so cool to get to hear Chris. And I don't think it was your intention, but man, it was like overflowing out of you that, that night. You were just preaching some really amazing stuff that I felt like a lot of people could connect with and would be a blessing for them to hear. And his music's awesome. And we'll get into that. too. <laughs> so all that being said, um, Chris, would you start off maybe by telling us just a, a little maybe Chris history and uh, how you actually got into doing music for the Lord? Okay. Yes. Um, thank you for having me on, by the way. I think you're supposed to say that in these situations. I don't know. You hear people say it all the time. Um, I don't know if I can tell you a little bit, but I will tell you the story of, of how I started making music. So um, I was born and raised in the church, and, and um, I always loved music, but I never really liked Christian music very much. And, um, you know, maybe when I was a kid, but as I became a teenager and, and whatever, I was mostly interested in punk rock and gangster rap and classical and, you know, techno music back then and everything. But um, on the rare occasions that I found something that was faith-based and it was also intentional and creative and, and interesting and stuff, I'd be into it. But, um, you know, in most of my youth, I, I did a lot of drugs and I just kind of lived waywardly, but I was always a part of the church. I always felt like I had some kind of relationship with God. I don't think that I had ever given my life to him, but, you know, I knew him and I always believed that he was real. And, um, on my, on the worst nights that I had, I felt his presence on the best nights that I had, I felt his presence and I still just lived the worst kind of life and did the worst kind of things. And so, um, in my early twenties, 
I had started, I had got really bad on methamphetamines. And up until that point, I had control over the drugs and the life that I was living. And I say control. I mean, I, you know, I did terrible things and I knew they were terrible. So you can't really call that control, but it wasn't a risk to my health. And when I started using meth, it became an immediate risk to my health. And I had some people close to me point out that like, dude, you're, you're spiraling, you know, you need to get help. And so through um, a few conversations with a few people that love me, they recommended that I go to a program called Teen Challenge. I don't know if you've ever heard of Teen Challenge. Yeah. Oh, yes. And um, I went to, so I'm from Louisiana and I knew I wanted to go far away because I didn't, I didn't want to be close enough to leave if I want, if it, if, I, if it was too hard or whatever. So I went to Seattle because I take a type of medication and some places won't accept you because they're not nurses and they can't administer medication. But this program in Seattle did. And um, I went there and about three or four months in, which I got what they call two hots in a cot. So it's like I got some, you know, good meals. Belly was full, sleeping good. I had essentially gone long enough not doing any drugs or anything that I felt sober. I felt in control and I felt like I was lonely. I hated being so far away from home. All, all my all the guys in the program, their families would come visit them on Saturdays and I would just have to go to another part of the house because you know, I live across the country and my mom came to visit me a couple of times, but um, most of the time I didn't have anyone. And so three or four months in, I had kind of decided that I was just going to, I was good. I was going to move back home and maybe go to another program there to finish my year out and, and whatever, but I was ready to go. And um, one night I remember I just heard this song in my head, this, this, I, I heard lyrics and a chorus and I heard sounds. I don't, I'm, I'm not really familiar with music. I've never had any kind of musical training or anything. I love music, but I heard a complete song and I wrote it down and I was like, this is weird. So I went and shared it with a roommate who was a musician and he, and he was, he was like, this is a, this, this is like an actual song. Like it's real. And he sat down on a little keyboard that we had and banged out a couple of chords and, and, um, you know, it took us 30 minutes and the song was finished. And so shared it with the guys in the house and, and everybody liked it. And so the way that we would raise our money was we would itinerate. So we would go to other churches and the pastor would preach and then they would make donations to our facility. And, um, they started inviting me to play the song when we would go to the other churches. So I got to go all around Washington um, playing this song that I wrote and it was awesome, you know? And so I started writing a little more at that point. Um, so I graduated teen challenge from Seattle and I wanted to go stay in the program. So I went to a ministry school in Portland, Oregon, because it's really close to Seattle. And in Portland, someone gave me this moleskin notebook when they, a friend of mine when they knew that I wrote and I don't know what it was about that notebook, but I put it in my pocket. And from that point on, I was writing every day. I was hearing songs of all different genres. That's just really good stuff that I thought was good. And it, it didn't, I didn't understand why. And I filled 15 of those notebooks easily with hundreds of songs um, and just wrote and wrote and wrote. And I knew that God had, that that was the, his purpose for me. Um, I knew it like in, in a part of my soul that I had only recently met, you know, and, um, and so everybody I would talk to, I would tell them, I write these songs, like, let's make some music, you know, and no one ever seemed very interested. And people would always tell me when I shared with them, oh, this is awesome. This is awesome. But nobody could write music or, you know, just the right people never found their way across my path. And years and years and years passed and I just stopped writing because it, it I became bitter or I, it just became frustrating or I questioned it too much. I don't know. Um, and then I moved. I ended up moving back home because I, I, I wanted to live here sober and I wanted to be close to family and know the family that I barely knew because I was in a cloud my whole youth, you know. And um, so I moved down here and I started writing again. And 
same thing. I would talk to people, I would share it with people and just no interest whatsoever. And so um, fast forward a little bit of time, we had a really bad hurricane here a few years ago called Hurricane Laura. I don't know if y'all had ever heard of that one, but it, it decimated this whole area and it was, it was awful. And it wrecked a house that I had at the time. And um, the insurance company was very unfavorable with us. They, they gave me a $27,000 quote for $130,000 of damage. And so we ended up having to take them to court and God, I can't even tell you like the law. I don't know if you've ever been to a mediation, but you sit in a room and they're in one room and you're in another room and you got a lawyer that just goes back and forth to try to find a middle ground. And the lawyer sat down with me and he said, this is the number that you can hope for. This is the best case scenario. This is the worst case scenario. We won't settle for less than this. And he kept coming back saying, I have never seen somebody show so much favor in one of these situations. And we ended up being given so much more than the, than the highest case scenario, which was great because my, I, I, my wife was pregnant at the time all this was happening. We were having our third kid and like God knew what we needed and he gave it to us. Um, but because that happened, my wife and I had a conversation and she, and, and we decided like, why don't we take this little bit and put it aside and see if we can, make some of this music and maybe that will be the bridge that I need to make the next connections. Um, maybe I'll be able to reach people when I actually have something and say, look, this is what I have. Like, let's do something together. And um, so that's how I started making, making the songs. I've got almost 15 songs. I think there's 13 or 14 that I've made just one at a time, you know, it's one single at a time. And, um, I'm at the very end of that budget now. I've got one that I'm waiting for the master to come back and my last one that I've started production on. And, and, and then that's it. And it's crazy because like you just see how God works along the way. And every year I was at a place where I could not imagine what the next year was going to look like and what the next step was going to be. Um, and there were years that I was completely given up and thinking, well, maybe I was wrong and maybe, you know, I don't know how I'm hearing music in my head all the time, but um, God is faithful. He just has a different kind of timing. And I still don't know what his purpose or what his goal is, but I know that I'm so grateful to have been able to make some good music and meet the people that I've met in the process. And so hopeful that there's another door on the horizon, you know. So that's the short answer. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like that's so encouraging to at least some people listening because we do have a lot of creatives out there and like I know Rick is like this I I personally I have I don't know how many songs just sitting there waiting to come to life so to speak and uh it's interesting or you're just talking about you know these things just keep coming to you and it's like you got this stuff laid out and it's so interesting to me when I get to hear other creatives talk about you know, how a song does come to them. Everything from some people think something's wrong with them. If they don't have a song in 30 minutes, some people, it can take months or even years for a song to finally end up finished. So yeah. um, it's literally, if somebody's in that season where, you know, they, they're kind of like Chris was, where it's like, okay, I'm trying to bring this stuff forth. And, you know, people are saying this is good, but, you know, nothing's really moving with it at this point. Sometimes there's a season that I really feel like, it's that waiting period where God's working on us in ways we don't even realize. So we just haven't had a chance to connect those things into what is coming into that next season when it is time for some of these songs to come forth. And I'm, I'm just bringing this up because I did a co-write where man, my, uh, my co-writer, she did this song. I trust you, Kelsey Jaminden. And uh, Kelsey was talking about, she was in college at the time. And she had this song that started to come forth on her heart. And it literally it hit the point where it was like the Lord was tapping on her shoulder going on her shoulder going, do you trust me? And she felt so convicted. And it was literally through this process. She ended up, you know, finally completing this song, but she had to walk through. She's singing this song for other people to claim over themselves. I trust you. She had to fully embrace it. Mm -hmm. And 
I walked into a co-write with Kelsey. Um, I have a song called Authority coming out on The Believer's Authority. And it was so funny because it was, it was literally a song that I was contending for. That That's another story. We talked about that in another podcast, or I'll tell it again when it comes out. But we were literally talking about all these things that it is to walk out your authority. And uh, in my contending process, basically, the Lord had highlighted their seven key principles to authority. And literally, the number one tenet is basically knowing whose you are and mm-hmm. having your identity in Christ fully rooted. Because if you don't know that and you're not rooted in that, you can't walk in your authority, right? But as I was also contending for this song, you know, there's some spiritual warfare stuff. You know, Kelsey is an awesome person. Like, we're praying over stuff. And uh I just had some of those moments like God going, do you know your authority? And man, did I get so convicted. It wasn't until like she and I had gone back and forth on so many different things just behind the whole principle of the believer's authority. It wasn't until like we had gone through this process and writing the song till it was ready. So I just want to throw that out because there's some people I know when it comes to writing music, it can be really discouraging too. like, oh, I just don't have that final piece yet. It's ready for you. It's there. I just want to say that. <laughs> and another thing is, is that what Chris has brought up, you know, he came across some money that he was able to save and use towards recording his, his songs. And I, I, I can totally relate to that because I had songs for years too, and I didn't re- do, didn't do anything with them until I got this money. And I, I said, what am I going to do with this money? I'm going to do what I should have done a long time ago and start recording these songs. So I've in the last two years, I've recorded like three hours worth of songs <laughs> and I started putting them out there and I'm, I'm going to, I'm just with you, Chris, as, as far as that goes, I'm just going to put them out there and see what happens. And uh, I believe God is backing, backing you up, backing me up. And we're, 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 we're giving it all to the Lord. We're putting our money where our mouth is. We're doing everything God wants us to do. And I believe he's led us to do this. And then we're going to reap, we're going to reap something in God's timing. So I, I, I encourage people who, who want to do something like this, like Chris, Chris done, as I've done, and in God's timing, you're going to reap what you say. If you're putting out something out there for, for God, he's going to back you up, and he's going to, you're going to be rewarded for it in this lifetime, I believe. Yeah, man. I know people need to hear this message. Yep. Like, we've got so many creatives that are either just dipping their toes in the water or have been out there for a while. And um, one of the things we were kind of talking about in our pre-interview is like, the Christian culture, especially when it comes to like music, and uh, there's this big thing about self-promotion. And I, I, I kind of feel like it's important to highlight, like, I know Rick has been, I'm going to say victim to this, because he had highlighted something to me where um, he had mentioned that somebody really liked his music and was trying to help him, and he appreciated that. And I think their heart was definitely there. But uh they had had some non-believers check out his page and had mentioned he was posting too much. And it's interesting because not just not just Christian musicians, but just, you know, Rick and I have been through these these gurus classes on the industry and whatnot. There's pretty much whatever it is, whether it's music or any industry, if you're trying to get even seen on social media, they recommend posting between three to seven times a day, depending on what platform you're on. And uh, so number one, I know Rick was, you know, in line with that. But the other thing for my number two point is that I think the person's approach might have been, you know, a a little differently than what uh, the desired results should have been, I think, where they've got non-believers looking at Chris's page or at, (laughs) at Rick's page. And they're just saying, well, do you think he posts too much? And of course, they're gonna be like, yeah, you know, no matter what, I think they would have wanted to find something wrong with his page. But the the thing I think was, I think this person looked at Rick as somebody that was really trying to be a self promoter. And, And I know Chris was talking about this, too, where knowing Rick, as I do, I think what the whole principle behind everything crazy blessed worship is we want to be, you know, Jesus promoters, <laughs> like whatever we are doing, the whole point is to glorify God. So if anything that we're doing isn't pointing to that, you know, then that's obviously something that we need to reassess. But the other thing that I see a lot of Christians doing is they're looking at other Christians. And this is the whole like log and plank thing in your own eye, right? Versus your brother's eye. We we sometimes are 
are looking at other Christians, we're going, well, what they're doing, um, they shouldn't be doing it that way. But what the thing is, we don't always know is, has that person prayed about it before they did it? Have they prayed through that, that thing? Have they prayed after that thing through the whole process? Have they been turning it to God? And I've actually seen that. And I'm just saying this because I know a lot of people fall on with Rick and his music too. And it's that I know Rick is praying about it. He's he's someone that fasts. He's always wanting to highlight God in whatever it is that God puts on his heart. And I have literally seen him have people go, I don't think you should do that. But he is so convicted that God has put whatever it is on his heart that he does it anyway. And you know what? That is actually called obedience. When we are more in our fear of the Lord mode and, and being afraid of not honoring him versus, you know, being the fear of man mode and wondering, well, gosh, they might think I'm self-promoting. So I just want to, I feel like somebody needs to hear that right now, but I, uh, I'd love to tag you and Chris on some of the stuff that you are talking about. Cause I know you've st struggled as a Christian with the whole concept of self-promotion and uh, yeah. I feel like your story could bless many too. I do. I still struggle with it, but I, I, I don't know that I, I struggle with spending money on promotion, but I've still done it on a few songs that I felt like, were worth it. And then I, and then I regretted it because like now you're at, now I'm at the point where I'm at the end and I'm thinking, Oh, that's four more songs that I could have made if I hadn't, you know, done that. Cause I don't know how that promotion works. I don't know. I like, I've never bought streams, but I have invested money into people who are able to get your songs on playlists and things like that. And, and I've, I've vetted the people that I've only worked with people that I know love God and are doing what they believe to be his work as well, but it's still money, you know, but when, but separate from the money, just from the self-promotion, I struggle with just not knowing what to say or what to post. I, you know, I'm so earnest with the, my thoughts and, and my content that I struggle with, with posting regularly. I feel like I'm forcing it when I'm doing it, but to go with what you're talking about and with, with people like Rick, I, I, I 100% agree that, if God is putting it on your heart to put yourself out there as much as you possibly can, and if you're doing it with real motives, there's nothing wrong with it. Cause think about it, right? Like we are only creative people because he gave us that gift. That's, that's, that, that's his thing, right? Like he is love, but one of his most demonstrative characteristics is the fact that he is a creator, that he loves to create and he loves what he creates. And his creation is on display. He, everything that he made, he put out there for people to see. He wants you to see it. He wants you to notice it. He talks about it constantly from, you know, in Job and in the Psalms. And, and Jesus talks about it all the time. And it's, it's, it, he loves to talk about what he made. Like, are you going to call God prideful for doing that? For like, is he shoving it in your face and whatever? Like, I, it's just such a strange concept to think about, but we have to remember that God put our creativity in us. And if we want to be a mirror of him, a reflection of him, it, it, it's okay to put the things that we create on display because that's what he does. Right now, if we're doing it for ourselves, like you really have to, it's a fine line to know your own motivations and to, to have to really do the work to lay yourself down every day and to die to yourself. But if you're someone who knows that you're doing that, and if you're someone who just wants his light to shine in any way that you can be involved with, then self-promotion is an art. It's a beautiful thing. Um, I just personally am awful at it and do not have any <laughs> idea how to breach that most of the time. Like I, I'm, I feel like I wish I had come into the world 20 years ago where, you know, you had to people that did that for you. If you, if you had something that was worth sharing, then there was, then that was somebody else's gift. And the person who that had that as their gift, you would kind of come together and, and go forward together with like, look, I've got the music and you've got the promotion and you've got the, you know, the, this, and it's like all the gifts come together to, to make this thing work. But now with our Spotify culture and our um, social media world, like the artist is expected to do everything. And 
I just don't feel like me personally, like I have some of those gifts, but if you do, then man, someone saying that you shouldn't let that shine, that is, that seems like a personal attack, like a real attack. Like why, why wouldn't you? Because the creator displays his creation and he gave you that gift, right? Yeah, and I think for you know, and Coley talks about this all the time. It's it's being uncomfortable, being uncomfortable, you know, in that situation because you know we ha we have to come out of our comfort zone in order to do it. It's not a, it wasn't easy for me to come out of that that place where I felt like I was being you know selfish and self motivated, and and be and and come out of that place where I become comfortable doing what was naturally uncomfortable to do. And I think it's probably the same thing with you. You know, it's you know you don't feel like you're gifted at doing that, but I believe if you do it enough, you eventually get to the point where you you probably more comfortable with it. I'm sure you're right. Yeah, it's where crazy sure blessed worship right. comes in, you guys. We are all about networking. Um, the crazy blessed worship Facebook group has a huge group of you know, singers, songwriters, um, different session musicians. We've got um, producers, we've got radio personalities. There's, there's DJs looking, you know, to hear people's music and different, like all these different backgrounds down to, you need somebody to do a storyboard. You want to connect with like a videographer and writing a storyboard on how your <laughs> music video is going to come out down to like, I know I'm one of many that does graphic design in the work or in the, in the group. And uh, my goodness, it's like, we have so many people that are fighting the budget thing. And I totally get that. Like, especially you're talking oh, about yeah. uh, Spotify, Chris, like it, you don't really get paid very well through the streaming <laughs> platforms if you get paid at all. That's so to be able to kind of help along that and, you know, why can't we come together as the body, as a group and network and say, you know, dropping a post in the group saying, I am looking for someone that can, you know, top line a cool electric guitar on this piece or whatever it might be. Um, that's the whole point in, you know, God gave us other people to do these things in creating. And um, man, you remind me like in the very beginning of the Bible, it's the first thing that God tells us about himself. It says, in the beginning, God created, right? right. So yeah. if we're made in his image, we're all natural creators in some way, shape or form. So I think it's really cool just, you know, getting to be part of just even sitting and listening to some of this conversa conversation about how, um, why, why should we not be putting that stuff out there for others to see? Because here's the thing is if we're rooted in our identity as a child of God, and we're putting those things out there and they're like, well, look what God's children are doing for him. Then we're doing it right. <laughs> so right. I just feel like somebody needs to hear that there. And um, I know we got to wrap up pretty quick here, but I want to touch on your music a little bit more here, Chris. Um, where can they find your music? Number one, are you on all major platforms? Yeah. All major platforms. I don't know the names of all of them, but I, 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 you know, like distro kid. So I just kind of upload my music with them. And I know it's on iTunes and Apple music and TikTok and Spotify and YouTube and all that, but there's like a long list of them that they put next to the songs. I'm not sure. Well, Deezer. I gotta encourage Deezer. You guys to listen. I, yes. Deezer is a thing. Deezer, I actually, yeah. <laughs> I, I didn't know that was a thing until recently, I but yeah, too. you guys go check out Chris's music. I, I literally like, just getting to listen to his songs, just listen to the lyrics. Each one sure. has like a cool sound, but there are very, very powerful lyrics that I think can just bless you where you're at and, and whatever you might be dealing with. Like these are songs that can literally meet you, if that makes sense. And um, he is on, I know you're on Facebook and mm -hmm. you're on Instagram. I don't know. I I, I don't go on Instagram, but I know when I post something on Facebook, it also goes, it to, goes Instagram. to Instagram. Okay. Yeah. I've seen that on your page. So I had to think about it. And then yeah. are you on <laughs> any of the other social medias or are you the, the Facebook guy? I think just Facebook. Um, what, what are, what are other ones? TikTok. Yeah, like TikTok is. Yeah, I do do TikTok. I do. I, but I, I have, I was trying to post songs that I'm not going to record on it, you know, and I just got really behind. So it's been a couple of months since I have, since I have 
had time to come into a room and, and, and get a song just right. But uh, I do intend to do that more. Okay, cool. I'm like, man, maybe I should get a TikTok. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> and go check it out, right? Yeah. Um, and then um, I want to throw that out there. If, if you were just listening to what he said about recording stuff on TikTok that he isn't necessarily going to release, go back and listen to Rachel Durbin's interview because she's talking about why she started her YouTube and just recording things. Just right. So they're there. There's a good placeholder, but it's really cool right. to go check those things out. Um, and then we always ask this, you know, you check out anything of Chris, whether, you know, it's his, his post, he's got just an awesome ministry that just, he, you know, they say, you know, out of the mouth is the overflow of the heart <laughs> and just getting to hear what Chris has to say. Um, absolutely love the message that he puts out there, whatever it is. So if you'd like love, follow, share anything, social media, any of his music that helps more than, you know, we know the algorithm is not necessarily the friend when anything Christian wording is is involved and uh so we gotta support each other and we know we appreciate when you do it for crazy blessed worship but before we go i just i feel led to ask you this chris is there anything just you feel led to share with us that's on your heart before we hop off so no there isn't but uh, but i will but i will tell you when i was running this morning i was listening to something and and i i think this was profound for me, so I will share it because it's been on my mind all day. Um, I, I, we do a small group, and last week in the small group, somebody read, you know, Isaiah saw heaven, right? And then John saw heaven, and they both wrote about the throne room and what they saw. And they read the two scriptures side by side, and they asked, what was the difference um, between the two writings? And Isaiah saw heaven, and it wrecked him. And he just saw what a wretched man he was. And I mean, he just, it just killed him and humbled him in, in a very, and, and not the kind of humbling way that we talk about where it's a positive thing. Like, I mean, it, it wrecked him. And, and John just wrote about the awe that he was in when he saw the throne room, right? And so what's the difference between Isaiah and John? John knew Jesus. Isaiah was under Isaiah was born and raised and lived and died under the weight of the law. And John knew Jesus. And when we have an encounter with Jesus, the weight of our sin, it's still there. You know, all comes from a place of humility. It's not like, oh, that's pretty. It's more like. That is so far from what I am, and it's so amazing, and I'm so grateful to be able to stand and witness it. Um, but we get that, that beauty. We get to see the, the, the beautiful stuff, you know, and like, I don't know why that came to my mind just now. It's been kind of floating around in there all day, but just the idea that like, if you're feeling the weight of your sin, what you're missing is an encounter with Jesus. Because when you do, you just, you recognize how, how much in awe of him and his gift to us you really should have. So, yeah. Oh, and I would also say, if you listen to something that I've, if you do go and listen to a song that I made and you don't like it, um, I forgive you. And <laughs> I would just ask, listen to one more before you decide not to listen to any more because I've got a lot of different kind of sounds in there. And so you might not like one, but you might really like another. And so I would just encourage somebody to at least try to. You know what? That's good. I think we should all be asking that. <laughs> I know. Amen to that. <laughs> well, man, Chris, I am bummed that we need to wrap up. I know we could probably just go back and forth for hours, you know, in heaven one day, right? But <laughs> uh, if, uh, you know, some of what we were talking about in, in this conversation, um, so what Rick and I have really been doing a lot of back work on is we do individual coaching for people. If, you know, they're sitting there and they're stuck in anything, we kind of, we know a lot of people, again, that have been from the beginning, dipping the toes in to, you know, been doing music for many years. And there's different elements that they just feel like are missing or they're in their wet next face and phase. And that's where we just kind of hit the pavement and help out with. So 
Um, if you're interested in any kind of coaching or just doing a consult with us, you can email us at admin team at crazy blessed worship.com. We'd be more than happy to help and do what we can and come alongside you. And just Chris, thank you so much for everything that you shared with us today. We're honored to have you on and just thank you so much. All of you who joined in with us tonight. We really appreciate you more than you know, and we wish you a crazy blessed day.